let's get into it soul not for sale podcast coach calling here we got joe rogan talking about kyle rittenhouse and how quickly how easily the mainstream media can turn an entire population of people against one person they can just doctor a story you know the old thing the old mockingbird thing they all say one thing they only show you little bits next thing you know you end up hating someone and that's exactly what happened to kyle rittenhouse and they were willing to do this to such a young person in order to the divide to divide the country because at the time that was the most ramped up i have ever seen divide and conquer based on black versus white they were going real hard with it even kyle rittenhouse who actually was attacked by white people at a black lives matter event attacked by white people attacked those white people defended himself against those white people and that somehow made him a disgusting racist and it was only because that's what the media molded a lot of people to think and that's what they're touching on in this whole thing and then after that i'm going to show you how hollywood <sighs> how these puppets in hollywood reacted to kyle rittenhouse being found not guilty it, it's 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 actually disturbing how they all reacted because they really even with what i just said they still made it about race they still made it about divide and conquer it was so so gross and then i'm going to show you that there are still people today who have this same opinion of kyle rittenhouse doesn't matter headline readers folks they're the worst let's get into it and they all feel controlled that's um, what's good about today because before the media used to do exactly what they're doing now but they didn't it wasn't transparent right nobody knew right well there used to be 50 giant media companies so there used to be more truth that could get out but now because of bill clinton and the telecommunications act in 1996 we went from 50 giant media companies down to six meaning that every tv show every newspaper every magazine every radio show every it's all comes from one of the yeah. six companies right and that's why journalism sucks so much right now because journalists used to come from blue collar backgrounds like me but now they uh they know they all have to work for one of the six billionaire owned companies right and so the billionaires handpicked those people from ivy Ivy League schools now and they're all going to be class loyal and so that's why the whole thing is you know it's a great time but also we're pitted against each other now by the media like never before right like no matter what the story is they have their minions in the press reported in a way that makes you hate your neighbor and blame your neighbor and not the guys doing it right like yeah. uh, so so the oligarchy gets keeps us fighting uh, amongst each other and that's real that is that's not made up that's a i mean look at how they lied about um the biggest story like so the kyle rittenhouse story mm -hmm. right now i hated that kid because uh the corporate media told me he was a white supremacist who didn't live in that community he traveled across state lines with guns to shoot three black people at a black lives matter rally and i hated him and then i watched the trial and it turns out he did live in that community he was a uh, a lifeguard in that community uh he was asked to protect a car dealership by immigrants of color because the cops wouldn't and uh he he didn't travel across state lines with guns and he didn't shoot three black people he shot three white people and i was like what? i think that, he only shot two guys that uh maybe Wasn't you're right it? maybe well Did he, sh he killed one he definitely Did he shoot three and then he shot the other guy in through the arm through the arm yeah uh and they're all three criminals they, yeah. That's another part they leave yeah. out. They're, They're all three, three criminals, criminals, terrible people. This is the thing about um, riots, right? When riots are too much like a war, like uh, any kind, anytime there's uh, a gathering, protests, when people get angry and they're marching, I think that ignites in us the same feelings of war and people start doing wild, crazy shit. They went after that dude with a skateboard and tried to hit him with a skateboard. He ran away from them he was, before he shot him. So he shot the first guy who was the pedophile, yeah. right? And and we know that that guy had threatened to so he shot and killed two men wounded another man so okay. three so he killed two and wounded one so the and the first guy he shot with had threatened to kill him all day long and we know that he attacked him because his fingerprints are on the gun barrel it even says it right there in wikipedia stop go back yeah grab back the barrel him. of his rifle right. there it is it, so we, mm -hmm. but it says look at this a race was a major theme in the u.s media commentary although rittenhouse and those he shot were white <laughs> white isn't that wild yes and most people didn't know including people that met kyle rittenhouse like someone david lucas the stand-up comedian he knows Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh -huh. He brought Kyle Rittenhouse to the mothership. And guys who were there 
who met him when what the guys you shot were white yeah like nobody, everybody's like what yeah and then you have to tell them not only were they white like these guys are like career and criminals cr one one guy was a pedophile well, the one guy pulled a gun on him yeah <laughs> yeah and the, the, whole, the media just fucked so that kid And he got exonerated, and you and know, and now, go ahead. No, people say to me, they go, Jimmy, why, why are you defending Kyle Rittenhouse? I go, I'm not defending Kyle Rittenhouse. I don't know Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, I'm defending the truth. And why right. aren't you pissed off that the corporate media lied about a 16 year old kid to divide the country? Because that's what that was about. Yeah, and you're just going to polarize that kid even more. I mean, that kid's going to yeah, lean so course. far right now. Of course. Of course. They're the only people that stood by him, and everybody else lied about him. The media lied about him. And so many people had this. So, right, there's surface narratives, right? And surface narratives are the best. They're, the media is the best at propagating surface narratives. They're best at headlines, even if they're misleading. Safe and effective. Yeah, they, but these, these surface narratives are the ones that get into people's heads that are the least informed. And that's the general population. People still think Russia Gate's real. Oh, yeah. Look at people like Bill Maher. Oh, yeah. That was shocking to me. I'm like, oh, I thought... He right. just hated Trump, but he it's doesn't like, even know what the WEF is all he about. He didn't even. Did you see Roseanne had yeah. to tell him? Yeah, that's he, he didn't crazy. even know what MK Ultra was. That's crazy. He does, like that's crazy. And then he got the balls to tell Bill Burr, "This isn't your lane. It's not your lane either, Bill. Yeah. You don't know fucking anything." Bro, Bill chewed him up. That was wild. <laughs> that was hilarious. You can't you can't go tat 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 like that with Bill because he does that to himself all day. <laughs> There's literally, I think I even played it on this channel. There's like a seven minute compilation of just Bill Burr tearing down Bill Maher on his own show. It was just so wild. And he said, he's like, he's like, what have you done? He goes, you know, like, why are you more important than me in this subject? He's, you haven't done anything. <laughs> it was so good. So crazy. Oh man. But yeah, that's what they did to Kyle Rittenhouse. And I will say, you know, I, and they brought up Russia. They did the exact same thing to Trump. There are still people who will just be like, well, you know, you don't want a racist person in office. And you could just go, what did he do that was racist? And they'll just look at you with glazed over eyes. And some of them will just get mad. Be like, You're so mad. But like, can you tell me what he said? Uh, just everything, man. Just how he is. It's just, literally. I'm not making that up. Go and do it with somebody. Someone who thinks Trump is racist. Ask them. They'll just be like, I, I remember I've had that conversation with so many people where it's just like, oh, man, he's just a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. What's he do this trouble? Oh, just the stuff that he's he said, man, he said stuff. Did he say something about Haiti? So what? Who cares? No, he can't be saying stuff like that. You know, the president, you know, that whole statesmanly topic comes up. It's so ridiculous. But let's focus on Kyle Rittenhouse. Let's get into it. Maybe one day he'll be president. You ever think of that? You ever think of that? One day, Kyle Rittenhouse might be president. <laughs> Let's get into how Hollywood reacted to Kyle Rittenhouse being found not guilty. Remember, this is a teenager that they were so upset about. As to the fifth count of the information, Gage Grosskreutz, we the jury find the defendant, Kyle H. Ritten Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. A jury on Friday found Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty on all charges in the shootings of three men in Kenosha, Wisconsin, including two who were killed. As to the third count of the information, unknown male, we the jury find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. Now, Hollywood is reacting to the verdict on social media, including shameless actress Emmy Rossum, who tweeted, this is a devastating blow. LeVar Burton says, tell me again, there are not two kinds of justice in America. Andy Cohen didn't mince words, simply asking, what in the actual f As for comedian Kathy Griffin, she summed up her thoughts by writing, people suck. The jury who acquitted the 18-year-old had been deliberating since Tuesday morning and heard from more than 30 witnesses during two weeks of testimony. The case focused on whether Rittenhouse was acting in self-defense when he shot and killed two men and wounded a third during a night of protests and civil unrest in 2020. Filmmaker Ava DuVernay shared a message for the parents of Anthony Huber, one of the men who was killed, writing, quote, The verdict sends the unacceptable message that armed civilians can show up in any town, incite violence, and then use the danger they have created to justify shooting people in the street. 
Real Housewives of Potomac star and political commentator Wendy Osefo echoed that sentiment, tweeting, And this is exactly what we mean when we say we live in two Americas. The system only works for the people it was built for. This is nothing new, just another confirmation. Anna Navarro, a pundit who's a frequent contributor on The View, shared a reminder of the inequalities in past shooting cases involving white and black men. While actress Yvette Nicole Brown used sarcasm to get her point across, the good news is that white men and boys can still kill whoever they want and do no jail time. Isn't that fun? On the flip side, there were some right-wing political figures who voiced their support of the verdict, including political commentator Candace Owens, who tweeted, Justice wins the day. And Hold on a second. Wait one second. That was pretty long for Justice wins the day. Hold on one second. What did she actually say? Justice wins the day. No, Candace Owens actually said, not guilty. Kyle Rittenhouse is free. The criminal mob corporate enterprise that is masquerading as a movement concerned about black lives fails. Justice wins the day. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> you left a couple of words out there, but you see, you see what I mean? They made it completely about race, although it had nothing to do with race. It was three white guys, two white guys passed away. Condolences to their families. You know, they were they had a very muddy past. I'll say that much. And the guy who survived also, I was looking into his criminal record. He also had quite a muddy past as well. But it wasn't about race. It was about one guy. <laughs> when you actually just say the facts and that's why Joe, Joe Rogan talking about surface level stuff. It just goes perfectly because in reality, it was a young white person who decided to defend someone of color who was an immigrant, defend their storefront from the mob of people who were tearing apart city blocks because they felt like it, not doing anything to the people that were responsible for whatever they felt was wrong. They were going to innocent people's businesses, houses, cars, whatever, and just tearing it up. And somehow three white guys, one of which I remember this so clearly, there was a video of him calling Cal. This whole case is so crazy. Calling Kyle Rittenhouse, who's a very white gentleman, calling him the N word, a white guy calling another white guy. The N word repeatedly asking for him to fire his firearm at him, which eventually did happen because he took it a step too far. It was just, it didn't make any sense that another guy was about to shoot him. These were unruly people and the media painted it. First off, the media left out the convenient fact that these gentlemen were white really made Kyle out to seem like he was someone who was hunting black people and people fell for it. And what's so sad is people are still falling for it. Check this out. They're still falling for this stuff. Rittenhouse back in the news after a planned event of his erupted in chaos at the University of Memphis. Look at that. You can see protesters outside the auditorium. Video from inside shows he was quickly rushed off stage about 30 minutes into the event amid chants and boos that continued as his entourage left the school. Rittenhouse was acquitted of shooting three people, killing two of them at a Black Lives Matter protest in Kenosha when he was 17. But you see what I mean? Protests were erupting. They're still erupting. And I'm sure exactly like the Trump situation, you say, how's Trump racist? They don't know. They get really mad. You ask them, hey, why is Kyle racist? Why are you as a black person upset that Kyle Rittenhouse is at this school speaking to people who actually want to hear him speak? They'll give, they'll give you the glazed over eyes. <laughs> it's so, it's so ridiculous that this is still happening to this guy 
And here, here's another one. Here's where some people actually explain why they don't want him around. Oh, it's so nice. So nice to hear people who are eventually going to leave school and become part of the government and make things even worse than they are now, if that's even possible. Oh, so great. There's been controversy tonight on Kent State's campus as Kyle Rittenhouse spoke in a special event. Yeah, that visit was met with both praise and protests. Bree Buckley was there all evening and joins us now in the newsroom. Bree, what can you tell us? Yeah, Betsy, Matt, it was chaotic on campus. Both sides feeling very strongly about the topic with a large police and security presence on hand to make sure everything remained peaceful. I exercised my right to defend myself. <laughs> Kyle Rittenhouse speaking at Kent State University Tuesday night to a crowd of mostly supporters and fans. He's a hero because he confronted a very unfair justice system. Our justice system has become corrupted and um, he was able to prevail. Rittenhouse made headlines when he was 17 after facing murder charges in 2020 for the death of two men during a Black Lives Matter protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He was acquitted of all charges after testifying that he acted in self-defense. His message now, urging students to mobilize and push for campus carry. Put pressure on your lawmakers. Tell them this is not okay and I have a right to I have a right to the Second Amendment and you saying I can't own a firearm and bring it into the dormitories or carry my firearm in class is unconst unconstitutional. Many supporting his message. The right of the people to keep and to bear arms shall not be infringed. So I think we all need to recognize that. As protesters lined up outside the auditorium, chanting at the audience as they filed out. We just don't feel safe knowing that somebody with that type of history, that type of, um, you know, um, efficiency of violence should be here, um, especially given the history of our campus. This campus is a monument to the survivors of, you know, um, we, you know, these are shooting victims. The stop here comes just weeks before the anniversary of the May 4th shootings at Kent State, where four anti-war protesters were killed by the National Guard. Many groups protesting his appearance throughout the day, including one of the men, Rittenhouse, shot, who survived. Well, I've simply tried to live my life and not relive those moments. Kyle Rittenhouse has taken a different path. He has used every moment to gloat and to make light of taking life. The guy's giving a speech. You sure you're not taking advantage of the moments? You're, you're giving a speech. You realize that, right? You're at the same place Kyle is. You're giving a speech just feet away from where Kyle's going to be giving a speech. Absolutely amazing. Then I looked into that guy, his criminal past. You know, people of Kenosha are calling this guy career criminal. He secretly changed his name because he didn't want people to know about his rap sheet. And I only found one thing. Well, I mean, it's all, you know, when you're, when you're getting arrested over and over again, it's always bad. But when I saw this one, domestic violence, slapped grandma, I was like, oh, my God, this guy's terrible. Terrible. And he has a nerve to talk about Kyle Rittenhouse. So ridiculous. But again, goes back like that young black girl. Oh, you know, just someone who has that, you know, you know, uh, efficiency of violence. We just don't feel safe. You're a mob of people who rushed the school and made it so he had to leave. And you did it because you don't feel safe. You see the and again, you go, hey, what's wrong with Kyle Rittenhouse being there? Oh, well, you know, he just, he shot people and it was at Black Lives Matter. Anything that happens at a Black Lives Matter protest is a problem. You argue with a black person, Black Lives Matter protest, you're racist. Did you argue with one? You're racist. <laughs> no, you, you argue with a white person. <laughs> you're a white guy arguing with another white guy at a Black Lives Matter protest. You're racist. Get out of here, fascist absolutely ridiculous and it's sad people still feel this way about the guy the guy legally defended himself but even even jimmy Dore was like i hated the guy because i heard he was a white supremacist and blah 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 someone who is supposed to be on top of things like this supposed to learn the story right away for me as soon as i heard the story because of what was going on and I was going to protest and i was looking at things and how it all erupts and the people who were there and it just something seemed up right so when i heard this story i was like okay let's see it let's see the footage and the first thing i saw was a white guy calling another white guy an n-word and i'm like okay that's weird 
I'm like, that's not regular. I'm like, what's that about? And the next thing you know, you see the actual footage. Kyle's on the ground. Another guy's pulling. He's pulling something out. It's a firearm, obviously. He gets he gets a firearm fired on him. Everything played out the way it's going to play out if you attack somebody with a firearm and then brandish a firearm at them like you're going to use it. Everything made sense. But Hollywood, the government, the the NG, I don't know, NGO, the organization of Black Lives Matter, they all made it about race. So one of these celebrities claim that there's two justice systems. It just shows, again, going back to what Joe Rogan said, surface level. They're like, what happened? It happened at a Black Lives Matter? Well, everybody there is black, of course, right? You think so. You think so. But a lot of them look just like this guy. A lot of them look just like this guy. And a lot of them had criminal backgrounds, and a lot of them weren't there because they wanted to help black people. They were there because they wanted to riot and loot. And that's exactly what I think this guy was. <sighs> Won't say you deserved it, but you F around and find out. Happen, listen, F around and find out has no discrimination. It doesn't care if you're black or you're white. All it cares about is if you're effing around. That's it. You just have to be, you can be a woman, man, old, young. You're effing around. Gonna find out. That's how it works. Anyways, guys, just wanted to show you this clip. Joe Rogan, Jimmy Dore, Kyle Rittenhouse, like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and other than that, I'm out.